Hello, welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic journey. And today we'll be working with colored pencils. So you'll need your number two or HB pencil, a kneaded eraser, and some good quality colored pencils. Thank you for being here, by the way. I just appreciate you being here. It's always nice to draw with someone. We've got our Crayola colored pencils. We've got um, our kneaded eraser. Uh, the vinyl eraser is standing by, just in case we need it. And our number two pencil. So the first thing we do is simple shapes. We want this bird to take up most of our page. So you can come up and say, well, I want his head to be clear up here. I want his body to come all the way down here. Maybe his tail to come off the page there. So his head, head's just kind of this oval or circular shape there. Little body's kind of a circular shape too. Simple shapes. And the important thing here is that you're organizing your picture. Art, you know, you, you, you can't just slap something on your page and say it's good. By the way you organize your page, it's called composition. That is the number one important thing. I don't care how well you draw, if it's organized well, it's going to be okay. So we just organize it. You you sit there and you you know and you want it to touch or come close to touching three of the four sides. So we've got our little stick that we've got here. It's coming up there. That's kind of nice. I like that. Kind of breaks up that corner. His little beak is like a little triangle shape. And it's not perfect. Nothing here is perfect. Right in between the beak and the side of his head, that's about where his eye goes. Almost smack dab in the middle. Nice little circle there. All the other shapes we can do later on. If a feather is off, nobody cares. But if the beak is too far down or too far up, yeah, you know, people tend to notice those things. So remember, all the drawing that you're doing here is going to get erased. So don't get attached to your drawing. All the graphite does is it's a guide for us. So once you get to that point that you've got your, your picture kind of the way you want it, now we have to choose colors. So 24 colors is just far too many to have because as we mix, things are going to happen with those colors. So let's choose some colors that are, you know, beautiful that we like. And then let's go from there. Let's choose about eight. So I'm going to start out with this, this teal blue aqua green because I see a lot of that in the light areas. White is done for us. Might need a little bit of black here and there. So I'm going to take the black out, but along with that black, look at his beak. His beak is very purple. So I've got that violet. So just normal blue, maybe a, a little bit of this blue. Let's see, we need some magenta. That uh, magenta is kind of a purpley red, kind of a pinky purpley red. That's nice. And then maybe some warmer red. So there's one that's called uh, red orange. How about pink? Yes, that's the one I was thinking. Is that what you were thinking? Yes. There's one more color we need. Oh, what's that? Yellow. Some type of yellow. Now you kind of look through your set, see if you can find one that says golden yellow on it. That's plenty of colors. Uh, we've got eight colors and black. I am going to go through with my purple. And we're going to do all our preliminary drawing with the purple. Think of this purple like ink. Remember when we did the ink drawings, we said you don't have to draw everything, leave a lot out, when in doubt, leave it out. So that's, that's kind of how we're going to do with this purple. But the purple is a pencil, and so we can get darks and lights by the amount of pressure that we stick into it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of start out. I'm going to start with the eye. Here's the pupil of the eye. There is a little shine over that pupil, and so it's going to be a little half moon. So I'm just looking at my object and I'm going to draw all the dark areas as if this were ink. Leaving some areas out.
Little bird has these little lids that go around the eye. All birds do. Most animals do. You'll see these little rings that go around their eyes. That's their eyelids. So I'm going to shade a little bit with my purple. Nothing wrong with that, if you want to. And it's just like I taught you how to do eyes. You know, you, you do dark where the pupil is, a little dark ring where the iris is, and leave a little bit of out right below the pupil. That'll make it shiny, make it look more realistic. Any of the dark areas, I'm going to go ahead and shade that in with my pencil. And my edges, if there are dark edges, I'm just going to do little dots and dashes. What if I don't see any? I mean, this area up here is really light. Let me throw just a little bit in there, maybe. A little dot or a dash. There's the beak. Where that light area of the beak is, just leave it out. And this is just like our negative drawing when we did ink. Just leave it out. I, I do want to get as much information here as I can, as quickly as I can. Because i got to get rid of this graphite. All right, now the graphite's not bothering me. Because with the purple, it's not going to be too bad. But later on, you start adding other colors, and it will. So just a couple little dots and dashes. If it looks light and thin, leave it out. I just want to get rid of the graphite to show you what's happening. When I go over this with my kneaded eraser, I'm going to get rid of the graphite. The purple's going to stay there. And that's the cool thing about colored pencils, they're hard to erase. Now, yes, you do get rid of some of it. But right now, it doesn't matter. And, and look how nice that is. Once we get rid of it, you're left with this kind of ghosty image. The graphite is gone. But you know exactly where that bird is and we can still add color into it. If you wanted to throw some of these little textures in where the feathers are, just throw the darkest ones in. And remember, it doesn't matter if they're in, in exactly the right place. As long as your eye and your beak are in the right place, and your head is about the same, the right size, everything's going to work out. I don't know if you want to draw all those. So he's got this little branch that's kind of going up into him right there. That's not part of him. You can leave that out if you wanted to. But even the branch, draw the branch in. You know, you want him sitting on something. Some of these little lines, I'm just going to stick in there just to tell me where things are or where I think they are. I might adjust them later. I 
But now we're going to add color. We're going to go color crazy. Come in with the black, and I'm just going to do a few little areas. A little bit in his beak, a little bit in his eye, maybe a tiny bit down in his feathers here and there, maybe these that are really dark. And then I'm going to put the black away because I don't need it. So I'm going to start with the eye, just here and there. This black, the reason I do this is because it needs contrast. Contrast, which is a principle of art, makes things pop. Contrast makes interest. That really dark and really light together. Just going to make that interest. Look how that eye just all of a sudden went bang. That's what that contrast will do for you. So that's, that's what I want to do with my black. Black by itself is not a pretty color, but you need it for the contrast. So now I'm just going to go through little areas like in the beak that are dark. Put in some of that darkest area. I'm going over the top of the purple, and I'll probably do more purple over that. But I need that darkness. Gotta have dark. Where else do I need it? Up in the head. That's about it, really. Maybe a little bit up in there. Okay, anywhere else? Maybe a little bit down in here. Just a little bit. I'm going to put some on that branch because it's kind of dark down in there. So this is a lilac breasted roller. So it's a little finch kind of bird. And That's about it for my black. And let's start out with some color. What, what would you start with? Maybe some of that magenta or that peach? Light colors, yep. It's always good to do light colors first. So this, there's a lot of little white areas. And so I'm just gonna kind of try to leave some of those little light areas out. Even in the beak, there's some of this purpley, pinky stuff in those lighter areas. So I'm going to put that in there. Around the eye. In the eye. Oh, wait. What color is the eye? Brown? Oh, no. I put red in there. What am I going to add to get the red out? Visine. No. I'm going to use... <laughs> green, right? So, have I got any green? Yeah, I've got this kind of teal green. Maybe along with the magenta, this purpley color. Maybe that's going to give us enough to get that brown. So the more you add, the better it's going to get. I think there's a little pink up in there too. Just add color like crazy. And from here too, your structure is down, your darks and your lights are down. What's left is just color. Have fun with it. Sometimes I like to draw with color using black and white references. Why do you suppose that is true? 
exactly. You are not hampered by the color that's there. You don't look at called local color. If you look at an object and you are so concerned that you're drawing the local color, then it'll drive you crazy. So here's that a little bit of green in that eye. Now I already had the pink in there, so this teal blue is going to go in there. It starts looking a little brown, but it still has the color to it. And it's it's really kind of fun when people sit there and look at your artwork and go, I don't know what color that is, but it looks cool. So the other color that I see quite a bit of warmth to us is this yellow, but I don't want to just color everything yellow. So what's going to happen if I take this yellow and put it next to the green? Or over the blue? Or over the red? So all of a sudden it'll just warm things up. That's what your yellow does, warms it up. And I'm going to go over that blue and that red that's in his eye. Look what happens there. Yeah, orangey, greenish something. I'm going to hit that with some more purple, maybe a little more red. We'll have that color in there. So again, just layer in that color. Whatever color you feel like you see, just put it in there. Try some of that yellow over some purple. See what happens to it. But it's not brown. When you really analyze it, you're like, well, it's still kind of purpley, but it tones it down, just takes out that brightness to it. I'm going to even take some of this red, go back into his eye. I've layered all those colors in there. We got that green. Now the red is going to turn it rich brown. Look how brown all of a sudden that eye went. This is the orangey red, red orange. Mr. Yes, sir. I think my favorite part about this bird that I'm not seeing on my actual art is like the little flecks of white in between the colors. You're not getting it? Not exactly. Okay. So um, there's a couple of things you can do. You can take your eraser and you can erase out some of that color. Or as you're drawing, so I've just left little streaks here and there. When I go back into it, I go around the white like this. I just leave those little white areas out. The other thing is, is, is you can use, uh, there's a white gouache. Uh, this gouache is a water-soluble paint. It's like water paint, but it's opaque. And so it'll, it'll go back over things. And if you thin it out a little bit, it'll, it'll be translucent, pick up some of those colors. Uh, those little white flecks that you see in there, just leave them out. I know it's a little bit of a pain to leave them out, but I think overall you'll like it. And you just pick and choose because nobody cares if they're in the right place. So notice as we layer in the colors, 
So they start mixing with each other and they start creating these beautiful tones that you just can't get when you just lay one color down in there. I'm not getting the brown, but... You will. You will. So you, your colors are going to go from from whatever color they are. Anytime you mix complementary colors, especially red and green, you're going to get browns. But yellow and violet will do the same thing. I'm going to do a violet. One of the last things I do is a violet over the top of everything because it'll darken it up. It'll mix those colors. And that brown becomes more brown. I'm leaving a little bit of that red in the bottom or that orange right there because it just makes that eye look a little more alive. And this is just purple over the top of the red, over the top of the yellow. And where some of that uh, white was showing through and I did the purple, then the purple comes through. So you get these layers of color. And again, it's one of those things you just go, huh, how'd they get that color? Yeah. And remember, we're creating artwork, not a photograph. I don't care if it's the same color as our scrap. What's important is that the values are right and that it's you can make this even more beautiful than your scrap. I am adding some pressure to this purple. It's going to take that black and blue and mix it up. It's still going to be kind of purpley, but it's going to be dark. And that's what's important. I want that beak to be nice and dark. I have little streaks of, of yellow in, in him. But where that gray goes over, I'm using purple. The yellow picks it up and goes gray, but then there's purple in between. This is blue. I think I'm going to add a little blue here just to get some of that darkness that's up in there. Because the blue with the orange will turn brown because they're complementary colors. The blue with the yellow will turn green. And the blue with the purple just goes kind of a blue-violet. I haven't used any much of this magenta yet. I'm going to try this now in that area. The magenta with the yellow will turn more red. So I put some yellow in there. I put some red in there. That magenta is just going to pick up all those colors. And you're going to get this kaleidoscope of color in there. A little bit of this red over the top of that and voila you got this really pretty color and if you want it to go a little darker use your purple if you want to darken in some of that purple over the top of that remember value is more important than color I mean the color is frosting on the cake Farther away you get from the eye, the more sketchy you can be. Because all these feathers are very soft. Go ahead and just, you know, put in your little line and leave them nice and soft. Let those edges go. And it's just like, remember I taught you with ink, you just let the edges take care of themselves. That's what's going on.
Okay, now that I'm just adding color, I'm struggling with texture. What do you mean struggling with texture? Well, so, is it your edges? No, not my edges, actually. Feathers. The feathers are just disappearing the new color. Oh, okay. So, what you do is you just add a little bit of purple here and there. So, for example, like right here by his, his neck, I'm just going to take a few little pieces of purple and add in there. Here and there, you don't need it everywhere, and that's going to bring your texture back out. His texture is created by values. When you're ready, just take your purple back into it and just add a little bit here and there. And use that feathered line that I taught you where you kind of drop it in, you flip it, you fleck it. You know, the interesting thing too is sometimes I'll do that and I think, darn, I went too dark. I'll just take that vinyl eraser and you can erase everything but the first color you layered in. Don't be afraid to leave some of those little lines just coming out. Of, you know, because that's the feathers, and that's what creates that soft touch. So you just kind of do those little flecks every now and then. Just leave them hanging out there. I think this back part here, it's very warm. I think I'm going to pull out a brown and do that back part, and then add colors to the brown. You have a tan color, which is kind of a light brown, and that's the color I'm going to use for that. And then I'll come back in and add some more color. Rather than mixing a lot of colors, I think I'll just do this. And then I'll, I'll put other colors on top of it to darken it here and there. So again, go ahead and just throw in color like crazy. You see what colors are there. Have fun with it. This is almost becomes like coloring like you were when you were a kid. Remember that? And you just you just went crazy with color. In fact, as I go through and as I start layering in color, in order to get those colors, i got to press harder. And that's what's going to make it smooth. That's what's going to bring out the vibrancy of your color. And so you just anticipate that. I'm going to start out light and then, boy, when I'm done, I'm like grinding it in as hard as I can. And it's going to be smooth. I am moving fast because I told you we were going to have this done. I don't know if I'd do a background in this. I think it would. And if you do, try some chalk or something that's yeah. really. And, and just to, like, really, nice. yeah, fuzz it out, it back in there. When I really want it to go dark, I give it some pressure. And th what that'll do is it'll pick up all those colors that are underneath and blend them and mix them. It'll smooth out too. That's that's one question I get all the time. How do you make them so smooth? Pressure. Layer it in and then pressure. Okay. 
So this is magenta over that uh, tan color. Gives it kind of a warm tone. This is blue over the top of that orange, and of course it's going to darken it in. It's going to, but you're going to get a little bit of the blue there too. What's the last thing you're going to do to this? A good place to sign it is either right in between those limbs or right under him, over, over maybe this way a little bit. So I'm going to sign it right there. Hey, thanks for coming today. I hope you had an enjoyable time. I hope it worked out well for you and I hope you learned something. What's our mantra? Art makes life better. Very good. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.